Ew. All right, so I would typically go with a filter like this. Actually, I typically put these in. But as you can see, there's really not much room here to do that. And that's gonna, that's huge. I don't know. So anyway, that, this is kind of out because it's about the same size and it's thick. So I do have one of these, it's very tiny. And uh, I guess we're gonna go with this little fuel filter. It's the only one I have, so I might have to find more of these if this is what we're doing. Typically, I'm working on Hondas that have a fuel pump and uh, it just goes down to a fuel pump and there's plenty of hose to work with, but this goes straight from here to the carb, so we really don't have a lot of room to work with. So we're gonna go with the little one. I uh, just have to make sure there's usually an arrow on them to tell you which way they're going, but I can figure that out. So anyway, uh, I think I'm gonna cut this line. It's not the best line, but if it doesn't leak, I'm gonna keep using it for this. Um, and then insert it probably right in this area right here. Okay, let's do this. Our little fuel filter here did have an arrow on it, so it's pointing that away. And uh, I was gonna use the compression fittings, but the one I was gonna use was too big and the other one was too small. And I know you shouldn't use those on fuel lines because if they don't grip enough, then they leak. This isn't coming loose unless you turn it. I see down there on that one, look, there's a little compression one down there. Hopefully that doesn't give or leak because obviously, if that just gets old over time, it's just gonna relieve itself and then the bike will relieve itself on the ground. So, got my other hose attached here. Gonna attach it to this, which actually, does that have rubber on it? Just residue. Okay, so we're gonna put the line from here to here and need two more clamps. And then this vent tube actually fits up in the bottom right there. So. Maybe I should put that on now, because it belongs in there. So we'll just pop this over there while we have the room. And it, maybe I'll have to steal it a little bit, but for now, it's, it's not liquid. It's just air, because there's a vacuum diaphragm in there, and that opens up when the bike's running so that fuel can flow through. See, on the petcock we have, what do we got? Here's Prime. If you turn it to prime, it's not gonna, it's gonna bypass the diaphragm. It's gonna just flow. So that's when you're first starting it up and there's no fuel in the carbs. And then we have, what? Looks like we only have two settings. I don't see anything here. So prime and what, off? Oh, reserves at the top. So here's our reserve. There's our arrow. So right now it, the gas is on and it would run if the bike was creating pressure from this guy and then there's prime like i said runs all the time and then reserve sw swips swips switches it over to reserve when the level is lower in the tank all right now got our clamps down on the filter and i got the vacuum line attached to the petcock feels like it's pretty secure and um just wanted to make a note, I like using clear line for the gas, but in this case, I'm just using the old line and I should replace it at some point. Again, if it leaks, I will replace it, but it's nice to have the filter be clear so we can actually see gas is flowing through here. So now I'll put the other clamp on the line, push this on the petcock, and we should be ready to put gas in it. Hopefully nothing is leaking, hopefully. And we'll put enough in here to take it for a spin. Yeah, let's just hope everything's good. Filter is good to have in here since this tank wasn't the cleanest when I was done with it. But uh, we're gonna make this thing run. Well, this should do it. But uh, one note I want to tell you: that's a lot of, a lot of <laughs> metal in there. Uh, when you when you tighten these down, just tighten them snug. And make sure it's not pulling apart, but uh, make sure you don't crush this plastic in there because if you crank this down real bad, it could crush this. 
This is metal, I'm not too worried about that, but again, just make it snug and you're gonna wanna make sure these are not leaking. Uh, but yeah, this is plastic housing, so you could easily crack that inside and it will leak. So all this is up on top. I can see what's going on and hopefully we're good to go. Well, now we're gonna go into this. I did wipe it down a little bit. Got all the grime off the outside and we still have to get this off. I might have to heat this with a torch, but for now it's just in the way. I don't know how to get it off. It's just in the way. Anyway, we're gonna get this master cylinder off and it looks like we have some weird bolts. There's a Phillips and there's a flathead on this side. Let's hope they come loose without too much effort. And we can get in here and see what grime awaits us. Amazingly enough, even though I had to use two different screwdrivers, they both were perfectly willing to uh, come off. And there's my screws. Let's not lose stuff this time. Let's not lose stuff. Still missing parts for this bike. So there's my screws. Now for the nastiness. The ultimate nastiness. Oh, okay, that's kind of... There we go. Pry it up. What's under here? Hmm. Not as bad as I would have thought. Diaphragm's in good shape. And there's just nothing nothing inside okay interesting we're gonna clean this all up cover up everything put a towel over here and spray this down with brake cleaner it's disgusting uh we're i don't know what to do i mean we need to drain everything out Ugh, that's gross. All right, well, maybe it works, maybe it doesn't, but let's clean it up and see what we get. All right, let's go. Ah, oh, this can's out of power. I gotta put some more air in this can. All right, find another one. All right, there we go. Got a little spray in there. Oh, there's like dirt. What is that? What is this? Oh, okay. That is so gross. That is so gross. All this stuff collected up here. Oh man, that's like hard. Look at that. Ew, it's like earwax. Oh boy. I've been cleaning this out for a while, scraping up the ugly, ugly, ugly brake fluid. And uh, then I spray more carb cleaner in there or brake cleaner in there and now I think the best way to do this is to get in there, try and suck all this dirt out with the clean brake cleaner. So uh, hopefully I can get most of this. Kind of scraped up most of it. It's all pretty much loose. So I'm gonna try and suck this up. Suck it up with the dirt. Hopefully I get some dirt with it. If not, I don't know. I'm gonna have to get air and wear safety goggles and blow it out. Well, I must say, it's looking way better than it was. Uh, for as bad as this was, I'm not sure how to proceed. Because now that this is pretty clean, we could put good fluid. But everything that we're going to chase down through the calipers, which there is one on both sides, is going to be dirty, junky crap. So the question is, do we try and chase it up through the master? I'm not sure how to proceed with this. I'm gonna have to think about it and get back to you. Uh, what would happen if I would push the... Oh, this is a break, that's right. You know, look at that. I think it still works. So now I'm just putting air in the line, but see the dirty crap coming out through I realized working on this I never worked on a Yamaha brake system before it's always been Honda so when I opened this up and saw that that float there I, I've never seen that before this is not what I'm used to so anyway I thought I could get this circlip off but it's not real easy 
I think if I tried hard enough, I could, but this is all plastic, so I don't want to bust that. I wanted to clean under this float. I'm assuming it's a float. I'm not sure what all this is about, but this would certainly float as we put as we put uh, fluid in it. So anyway, I guess what we'll do is put clean cis, clean fluid in here and try and chase it down through. We'll definitely notice when it's clean coming out the bottom because what was in here was terrible. So I think that's what we'll do. Put clean fluid in here. I need to get a Q-tip to get some of those crevices out. So we'll put clean fluid in and I think we'll chase it down through. Probably gonna end up doing a rebuild in the end anyway. We're gonna have to take the calipers off. I don't think that this is actually gonna work too well. But I've been surprised before. Let me get some of this junk out of here. Get just a little bit extra dirt out of there. Yeah, get that out of there. We don't need that. All right, so I think we're gonna, in the next video, Oh, I need to clean up the top, too. I just want to get this crap out of here. In the next video, I think we're going to bleed out the brakes. Well, we don't have to bleed them. I mean, there's air in the system now. Uh, we're going to try and chase fluid down. That'll tell me if the master works. If we can pump pressure here and get it to come out the bottom, it'll work. Let's uh, put new fluid in the system. And uh, like I said, we'll probably end up having to do a tear down on the calipers in the end. But hopefully we can get good good fluid down through, and that's a good start anyway. Um, I'll see you guys on the next one. Get out and ride. Fix your bikes.